Captain's chair number seven, I think. Seven, yeah. Seven? Captain chair seven. All right. Hey guys, welcome to episode seven of Cuts from the Captain's Chair. Today we've got Jack in the house. Jack's got really curly hair. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how I cut curly hair, how I style curly hair, the things I've learned along the way that help me with curly hair. It's one of those things when you're starting out, it can be pretty scary and daunting when you've, when you've got a curly hair in your chair, but it doesn't have to be. What I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna actually come through really low and tight, keeping a fade really tight and low around the bottom. And I'm gonna work really hard on trying to really enhance the curl through the corners here and through the top from the front right through to the back, even keeping the back here nice and curly, but keeping the taper super low. What I normally do when I'm approaching curly hair and I haven't started cutting yet, I just use that moment when I'm wetting the hair down to try and find where the little hurdles and the challenges and the things that are gonna, I'm gonna come across in the haircut. I try and find them while I'm wetting and moving the hair around before I've even taken my clippers or scissors to it. Always have a plan. As you're wetting down the hair, that's the time to get the plan. Um, you can really find where the obstacles are gonna arise in the haircut. I can really see on the sides here that he needs a little tidy up. So we're gonna do a really nice tight little taper on, this, on, the, on the corners here and on the bottom, on the back of the neck and just really highlight the curls that he's got through here uh, and work with them. Move the top out of the way and just focus on getting this taper and the fade and the shadowing on the side nice and neat and looking good. Check from the front that I've got it nice and even. All right, so now you can see the tops up here. Now I just need to worry about these sides and how I'm gonna approach those sides. So now we've got the top out of the way, I can see clearly the sides now and where I need to work. So I'm just gonna come through and clipper over comb that weight line out. Just gonna come in through, the, through that midsection here. So I just want to sort of create a bit of a guideline that I then can come underneath and fade out. I find clipper over comb, I can control it a lot more rather than coming in, say, with a four blade. Um, I can sort of see what I'm going to cut before I cut it. So I'm not going to be too fussy when I'm pushing the top out of the way because he's got curly hair. You need to sort of go with the flow a little bit. I can always come back later and take more if I need to. But and just follow the shape, the way the hair naturally wants to fall. I'm not gonna force hair anywhere it doesn't wanna go because in real life, he can't replicate that when he's home, styling it. So I'm just gonna come through, clipper over comb, a lot of this noise out of the way and keep it super low. The thing with hair is, and haircuts is, once you take it, it's gone. You can always take more later. So just work down slowly. Don't come through with one big swipe and go bang, gone, because there's no coming back from that if you make the wrong move. And I start to see all that sitting a lot smoother now. So I'm gonna leave that. As much as sometimes you wanna come through and knock that, that away, I'm just gonna leave that to the end because again, like I said, you can always come back later. I can't put it back on. Essentially what I'm trying to do is just under this, this weight line here, underneath it, I'm just trying to make it all even and smooth it out and remove the hair that doesn't need to be there so then I can come through with my shorter guards and I can see where I'm going. If there's too much weight here or too much length around the bottom here and I'm coming in with a one blade or a two blade, I'm moving that attachment through the hair blind. I can't see clearly where that attachment is going to land. I'm just gonna come through around the top of the ear, real low and remove this weight, this bulk here. So when I come through with the one blade and the zero blade, I can see it working. I can see where to stop. I can, I've, removed the, I've removed the noise, I've removed the, the, the length 
that's going to get in my way. But again, I'm not coming above this guideline that I've created because these corners are crucial to curly hair and a lot of men's haircuts. Cutting corners out is a big sin in men's cutting. You want to keep all your lines square and straight. Create shape. Clipper over combed and established a light weight line. Remove that length and that bulk around the very bottom. So now I can see a lot more clear where I need to go, where my clipper can cut and where my clipper can't cut. Remember when there's lots of length there, I wanna be in full control of that one blade. I wanna know where to stop and where to finish. And if there's heaps of length there, the one blade gets lost. But when it's short, it doesn't. One, open. It's gonna come in real low here. So see now I've removed that bolt with the clipper over comb. I can see what the one blade's doing. So now I can come through and just pluck, pluck out the ones and be in full control of what I want to do. So now I'm just going to mirror and repeat the one open on the other side. I'm not going to come in through here yet. I'm just going to do the, the temple region. Okay, so now you can see the back here. I've removed a lot of that weight, a lot of that bulk. So now I can see what my one open is going to do. And I'm just going to come in and kiss the very bottom. I want to leave this as natural as possible along the bottom here. Edge the sides up, but leave the bottom. And I'm just working the corners of the clipper. I'm not coming in with the whole thing. I'm just working the corners. Again, I want to be in control of what I'm doing. As you can see, my one open has already kind of done a lot of the work because I removed that bulk and I can see where I'm coming underneath it. And I'm just sort of plucking those hairs out. Really want to just focus on making this bottom here nice and even. All right, so now I'm going to come in. I've done the one open here. I'm going to do the half open and just come in underneath it. Being really careful that I don't come in too high. Just come in a little circular motion. And again, I want to be in full control and I want to see what it's doing. I want to see which one I'm cutting. Just taking that down little bit by little bit. Okay, closing to a zero, closed. And again, same motion, really close, circular motion. Just plucking those little ones out. Nice and soft. Left hand side this time. Two or three in on the teeth. And just slowly taking it down. Now, I've come through with my open one and a half. My open zero. My close zero. Just going to come through now. I'm going to start taking off a few of these dark spots out with just my clipper over comb technique. Move a few of these dark spots out of the way. The only way you're going to learn how to do this is by doing it, taking a bit, taking a few of those dark spots and then stepping back and checking it from the distance. So now when I step back I can see there's a, there's a little dark spot just on the top of his ear here that I'm going to come through. Just going to take that down bit by bit. Step back, tiny little dark spot there. And it's just getting a feel for it. I'm just gonna edge up and make the corners nice and crispy. Edging out with my GDX Sanders trimmers. I love how all this is exposed through here because I can see where I'm going. Edging it ever so slightly. Not cutting into the hairline. Little bit by little bit. You don't want to be heavy handed on this technique. You can start to see it really enhances that taper.
just follow that natural hairline down through the through the back now. I'm not going into the hairline, just following what's already there. When I can, I open the face up on the trimmers and come against the grain instead of coming through and dragging the clipper down. I just like to come in with an open face. It just I just feel like it's a lot more comfortable for the client and a lot more comfortable for me because I'm not in the back of my mind stressing about pinching them. All right, so that's almost the sides done. I'm happy with everything down the bottom now. Now I'm going to turn my attention to the top. And we'll connect these sides in at the end. Wet it down again. Foam tonic. Foam tonic will make your life with curly hair so much easier. It's a pre-cutting agent as well as a styling agent. It helps the scissors glide through the hair a lot crisper and cleaner. It helps remove existing product buildup, dirt and grit. It just makes it a lot more easier to tackle and comb and manipulate the hair where you want it to go. I've put in my foam tonic, so it makes it easier for my scissors to glide through the hair. But when you come through and you're cutting curly hair, never point cut curly hair. Curly hair needs to hold itself. It needs to find itself so it can spring back into its curl. You don't want to use thinners or point cut curly hair. So what I do is I come through, stretch that first section out. I, I actually really don't want to take this much shorter at all. If anything, straight cutting this will probably help it curl up a lot more. So I'm going to come through and just lightly trim the top off. I'm going to take about eight sections from the front to the back. You've got to remember too, when hair's wet, it's stretched out. And when curly hair dries, it shrinks a lot more. You want to be cautious with how much you're taking. And I'm keeping these corners straight. I'm not rounding off. I'm not curling down. I'm not, I'm not, my, my fingers aren't dragging. I'm lifting up. You can see that foam tonic really starting to work. It's enhancing that curl. Just gonna come through and finesse with the clipper over comb technique. I've straight cut the top. I haven't point cutted it, just straight cutted it so it can highlight the curl and I can work with the curl and I can enhance the curl. Now with the sides here, I haven't even touched the sides through here because I just want to see where they land with the curl. So I'm going to dry the top off with my diffuser and then I come back through and if I need to take a few swipes with the clipper over comb technique just through this section, I will. But I'm really mindful of these corners because I feel like the corners with curly hair really help with the shape and overall structure. Foam tonic time. Foam tonics were huge in the 50s and 60s. The only problem with those foam tonics in the 50s and 60s were you'd have to pour them out and it would be everywhere over your hands. You'd be trying to cup it in and then you'd, walk, you'd rub it through the client's hair and it'd be dripping down over his face. So what we've done here at Upcut Deluxe is created the same thing, but in a foam. So one of the things I love about the foam tonic is it's just a light natural hold. It doesn't weigh the curl down. It just highlights the curl and works with it. Another great way to get the most out of this foam tonic is to activate it with heat. It's a heat protector, but it also with a bit of heat bites and grabs and holds the hair in place. So what I'm going to do with this curly hair is I'm going to just tap it in find its natural way. I'm just going to go with it, find where I want it to curl up, and I'm going to come through with a Dyson diffuser and just sort of lightly tap this curl in. The Dyson and the diffuser. Boom. What this does is it just evenly distributes the heat instead of pushing and directing the heat directly onto one spot. Half heat and half speed. I'm not going to move it around because I don't want to break this curl up. 
I just want to lightly just dry it off and let the product activate but also protect the hair. I'm not going to come through and run my fingers through it because then I'm just going to break the curl up and I really want to enhance that curl. So I'm just going to pat it in softly. You can already start to see it do its thing. So as you can see with the heat, it's really activated that curl with the foam tonic's help. So stoked. All right, guys. Well, that's a nice little tight taper. Enhance the curl with the help of a foam tonic, the diffuser and the blow dryers really activated it with the heat. I'm really stoked how this has turned out. All right, so that's us done. Signing out, episode seven, cuts from the captain's chair. Thanks guys.